Welcome back. We're going to look at Group Managed Service Accounts. This feature was introduced in Windows Server 2012 and of course it's still a current feature for Windows Server 2016 and beyond. And it will really make the management of service accounts simpler for you. Check it out. Okay, so when we talk about Group Managed Service Accounts, let's get a little bit of background here. First of all, make sure to check in the description below for all of the links to these articles that I might depict here in the video. Group Managed Service Accounts were preceded by Managed Service Accounts, which were introduced under Windows Server 2008 R2. Basically, a Managed Service Account is very much like a computer account, only it's a service account that can be assigned to a computer and then that computer can use that managed service account to operate compliant services anything that uses the MSA API essentially generally Windows services scheduled tasks these things can use a managed service account as the credential to run that service or scheduled task now a group managed service account introduced with Windows Server 2012 extends that same functionality over a group of servers, hence group managed service account. So this is valuable when you have a instance of load balanced service that can be run under the credentials of a managed service account, whether it's a web server, SQL server, etc. Anywhere where you can do a load balanced solution across several servers, group managed service account can be used to run those services across that group of servers. So we're going to try to depict a couple of simple scenarios. We're going to configure group managed service accounts and then we're going to configure a service using a group managed service account and we're going to configure a scheduled task using a group managed service account. And we're going to perform this on two different computers using the same account, hence group managed service account. Okay, here we go. So this is another great article, Getting Started with Group Managed Service Accounts, and we're going to work through this. It uh, has a great introduction explaining the difference between the standalone managed service account from Server 2008 and Group Managed Service Account. One of the biggest differences is the computer manages the standalone managed service account just like a computer manages its own password, the computer manages the password update of the managed service account. Whereas the group managed service account, Active Directory essentially manages the password of the service account and updates the group of servers that is consuming that. In this way, the group of servers can obtain the latest password from Active Directory. There are requirements you must be using server 2012, obviously Active Directory schema, and the servers have to be server 2012 as well. Next, we look at the requirements. You're looking at Kerberos Compliant Server and Client, Compliant Key Distribution Center, server 2012 DCs available to retrieve the password, and then PowerShell needs to be run on a 64-bit architecture for remote management of the group managed service account object version attribute of the schema must be 52. So let's go take a look in our environment. I'll show you around here real quick. We've got a domain controller. So oh, this is our domain, aaco.local. You might be familiar with it from my other videos. Let's see if we can look at object version attribute of the schema. Connect to schema. Object version is 87. Now, we're well ahead of the required object version stated here where the object version attribute must be 52. New GMSA account needs to be provisioned. Then if you're going to use a group, then you're going to want to have an existing security group. We'll go ahead and do that. And then first, we have to issue a master root key for Active Directory. So we're going to start with that. Create the key distribution services root key. Now this is interesting. It's command line and I think you have a delay built into this so you want to make sure that in the test environment for immediate effectiveness they're taking 10 hours off so if I run this command just straight up add ADS root key I'm going to get a root key but I have to wait 10 hours apparently 
the effective time parameter can be used to give time for keys to be propagated to all DCs before use. So in our environment we only have one domain controller so we don't need to wait for this to be replicated. Well let's see, all we gotta do is run this to create that, add KDS root key, copy, let's get a PowerShell prompt as administrator, see how this works out. Okay, oh we even have a GUID, okay, so we did that, now let's go back to getting started here we go we're back to our article now oh yeah we want to create a group let's go ahead and create a group security group new group G -N -M -S -A. test group okay and I'm going to add Tucson SQL 1 and then we're gonna go win 10 a is a workstation in this domain so we're going to install SQL using these group managed service account on Tucson SQL 1 and we're going to configure a scheduled task that opens Notepad on Windows 10a using the same service account. Trust me that's not what you would do in a real environment but I just want to demonstrate a service on one server and a scheduled task on another server using the same group managed service account without having to know the password of that service account. That's the beauty of managed service accounts. Nobody knows the password. So now both of those servers will have to reboot in order to be members of that group. So I'm just going to go ahead and reboot those while we're here. So there we go. While those are rebooting, we'll continue on in the article. New GSMA, GMSA account provision. Ooh. Well, we're going to have to do that. So they go into life cycle. We're not going to talk about this in at length. We're also not deploying a server farm per se. We've got a couple of computers. So let's look at step one, provisioning group managed service accounts. Only scheme has been updated to server 2012. We're good for that. We've deployed the master root key and we have one Windows Server 2016 domain controller. So we should be good in that. Domain admins can do this, should be good with that type the following command. Okay, so they break this all out. Now, yeah, there's a lot to digest here. Here, copy. Okay, name, we're gonna use the name parameter and we're gonna call this cmsa.test and the DNS host name. Oh, see, we better not do that. I don't wanna create a sub DNS. Kerberos encryption types. Let's see, do they go on to do an example? Yeah, they go on to do an example encryption types out there and they just go on and use that so I'm going to copy that I'll take that now they're not using the manage password interval so we can leave that off apparently that's optional default is 30 if not provided I don't know did they use it in here I didn't see it in here get in there so we're going to leave that one out principles allowed to manage that's going to be important and let's see how they do that. Right, see there, they have a group named IT Farm Hosts. So we have a group called GMSA Test. And then the same account name, I'm gonna have that the same as GMSA Test. And we need a service principal name. I don't know if we need a service principal name, but we're going to find out. Let's take one last look here. Oh yeah, see, look at that. Oh, we have several service principal names. I don't know if I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to see what happens if we just plow on without that. We're going to install SQL running this, and I just don't think that that SPN is going to be valid, although it doesn't look like it's optional. Okay, well, if it's not optional, then we better put something down here. Slash domain name. I'm just following the example here. I don't understand the implications of this necessarily, and we're going to find out the hard way apparently. Yeah, see, they're doing two different. They're using the fully qualified domain name and NetBIOS name of the domain and the fully qualified name of the domain. So we're just going to go ahead and follow this example here. Essentially, reproduced their example in our environment here. I've taken everything that they've done. Let's see if this runs. Here we go. 
hold on. Yeah, it worked. Now, where did it go? I have no idea. Let's see. I'm curious now. Oh, managed service accounts. I bet it's a good place for it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It probably can't find it with that command because it's actually a group managed service account. Okay. So, it sort of is a user, but apparently it's not a user. Oh, I probably should use get AD service account. Let's try that. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, that's all good and well. So now we are ready to consume that service account. So let's set up our scenario here then. We're going to start to install SQL on Tucson SQL 1. Well, there we go. I've cropped out a lot of the setup scenes here and we're at server configuration and we're ready to select our service account to run the SQL database engine. Make sure to check the correct object types and then we're going to just type in GMSA test and check for names it finds it we're ready to complete the setup of SQL Server on Tucson SQL 1 so off we go it was almost too easy installation is completed successfully and here you can see the service is running under AA code GMSA test. Okay, so let's add the group managed service account to this scheduled task I have here. Going into task scheduler, and I basically have a task to open notepad here. So I'm going to try to change the service account that's running notepad task to my GMSA test account. Oh, and it's not found. I took a couple of tries, then I went to Bing and I found this article. So you see he has the same problem I do. I'll even try looking up specifically in the domain. It really comes down to not having the ability to select that object type. So our solution is using PowerShell then. And here's the code from that article just gonna change the things that I need to change to make it work for me so notepad exe we want it to run weekly on Saturday at 3 50 p.m. and let's get the correct user account specified here and we're changing the description to notepad actually see where it says service there at right after the command I should have changed that to notepad as well I'm deleting the original one just so there isn't any conflict and then we'll run our script okay success let's go take a look and see what we got got a task name and service and it's ready Hit refresh and there it is and we can see it's configured to use GMSA test still can't see that object type however just hit OK oh <laughs> you really don't want to mess around in the GUI after you've configured a scheduled task in PowerShell the article specifically says that once you've created that task with PowerShell you have to manage it with PowerShell so now we're just going to wait until 350. So here you see there's no notepad running. And then 350 rolls around. You just saw notepad pop up there. So that scheduled task ran as GMSA test. This is what you have to do to make a scheduled task run with a group managed service account. Okay, so that's group managed service accounts. We used a service account on a SQL server to run the SQL service and we use the same group managed service account on a workstation to run a scheduled task. Thank you very much. Shotoku Tech, please subscribe, comment, like, and share. Thank you very much.